Magavanen folks. Today we have this very interesting looking double integral that was actually sent to me by my friend Abdur Rahim from the UK. It looks absolutely gorgeous. This is the integral from 0 to pi and integral 0 to 2 pi of sine of y times e to the sine y times cosine x minus sine x dx dy. Okay, cool. So how exactly do we tackle this thing? Well, I'd like to begin by first trying to compress these two trig functions or this difference of trig functions into a single trig function. And for that, notice that cosine of x minus sine of x can be expanded using one. And the version of one I'd like to use is one over root two times root two. So we have root two cosine x minus root two sine of x. And rather wait, it should be the other way around. So it should be root two times one over root two cosine and then one over root two sine. The reason for that is that cosine of pi over four is equal to the sine of pi over four and that equals one over root two. So that means cosine x minus sine x terribly, sorry about that, is actually equal to root two times cosine x times cosine pi over four minus sine of x times the sine of pi over four. And we know from elementary trigonometry that this thing should be equal to the cosine of the sum of the two angles. So that's x and pi over four. So that's cosine x minus sine x, which reduces the target integral to the integral from zero to pi, integral zero to two pi, sine y e to the sine y again, times the cosine, rather there's a root two factor now as well, sine y cosine of x plus pi over four, terribly sorry about that. Someone mentioned in the comment section that my pi overs are actually cursive and I had never really noticed that until now, but I think they look cool. dx dy. Now let's just introduce a transformation to make our lives a bit easier. So x plus pi over four is what I'm calling the angle phi. So this implies that i here is now the integral from zero to pi, integral as x approaches zero, phi approaches pi over four, and as x approaches two pi, we get nine pi over four. So this is still an interval of length two pi, which is gonna come in handy later sine of y times e to the root two sine of y times the cosine of phi. And of course, dx transforms into d phi and we have a dy term as well. And from here, we'll recognize some application of multivariable calculus, specifically spherical coordinates. So remember how if you have a double integral over a sphere of radius r, so let me just draw this out. So this is x, y, and z up top, and then you have the sphere of some positive radius centered at the origin. And if you are evaluating the surface integral over the sphere, then the area element ds would be given as r sine theta d theta d phi, where of course r represents the radius or the distance of this patch on the surface of the sphere to the center. So I'll just draw a vector here of length r. That looks quite horrible to be very honest. So let me first draw the vector instead slightly better and then this patch up top it okay cool so that's your area element ds and theta here is the angle made with the positive z axis which runs from zero to pi and phi is of course the angle that the projection of this vector makes with the positive x axis which varies from zero to two pi. And from here, you can notice the similarities. So in our case, we have r actually equal to one, 
theta is actually y and phi is still phi. So that means this whole thing here, that is to say sine of y d phi dy, or dy d phi, again you can switch up the order, it doesn't matter. This is actually your area element. So all of this implies that I here is actually the integral over the unit sphere. So that's r squared equal to 1 of e to the root 2 sine y cosine phi, where sine y d phi dy gets absorbed into the differential area element. Okay, cool, but now what? Well, we'll notice something with the argument of the exponential function. We'll notice that this is sine y times cosine phi, which is cool once again because in polar and spherical polar coordinates, we have x here equal to r sine of theta cosine phi. And r here is equal to 1, your theta is just y, and you still have a cosine of phi term. So that means x here is equal to this product of trig ratios, which implies that i here is now the integral over r squared equals 1, e to the root 2x ds. And what can we do with this integral? Okay, so again, recap. We are integrating this function here over the unit sphere. Okay. And the integrand is a function of x purely. But now we can ask the question that thanks to spherical symmetry, is there any difference between this integral and the integral over the unit sphere of e to the root 2y or e to the root 2z? There is no actual difference between these three integrals or among these three integrals. In other words, I could just replace x by z, and you can visualize this by a rotation of the coordinate axes, and write this as integral over r squared equals 1 of root 2 times z ds. And the reason I want z here is because z in polar coordinates, in spherical coordinates that is, equals the radius r times cosine of theta. And that's actually pretty cool, because now if I rewrite or expand this integral, I can write this as the integral from 0 to pi and 0 to 2 pi. Or, again, the order does not matter, but perhaps that's just my OCD. Of uh, What exactly? That's e to the root 2 cosine theta, and the area element is sine theta d theta d phi. So the integrand is independent of phi, so we just get 2 pi outside. That's the evaluation of the phi integral. Then we're left with integral 0 to pi, e to the root 2 cosine theta sine theta, terribly sorry about that, d theta, which is awesome because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I could just introduce a uh, negative sign here with a factor of, I will need a root. What the hell just happened? Why is this on 40? I use 7, not even 8. And there we go, perfect. So I can introduce a root 2 here and another root 2 down here. And of course I will need a couple of negative signs, but you get the idea. So 2 over root 2, this is root 2 times pi times the evaluation of this integral results in e, e to the negative e to the root 2 cosine theta with the limits being 0 and pi. Okay, cool. So as theta approaches pi, we get negative sign, I'll just factor that out. And then I have e to the root 2 times negative 1 minus as theta approaches 0, we get positive 1, so that's e to the root 2. And this is the solution to the integral, which does look quite nice, but we can do one better if we expand by a factor of 2 once again. So this gives me the hyperbolic sine function. In other words, the integral results in 2 pi root 2 times the hyperbolic sine or sinh of 
Route 2, which makes its first appearance on the channel Singe of Route 2. That is, Route 2 is a familiar face here, but yeah, this is the first time we're getting the hyperbolic sign of it. And this was, of course, the result of this gorgeous looking integral from 0 to 2, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi. Why do I keep wanting to switch up the order of the integration operators here? I am not sure. Perhaps it's the OCD kicking in, it's old habit. Whatever. This was absolutely gorgeous. I love the touch of multivariable calculus and spherical coordinates. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. I post my write-ups over there. Thank you. See you next time.